Hey guys, it's Ben with Myers Woodshop. I finally did it. It took so many years. I bought a spindle upgrade for my CNC. I bought an 800 watt. First, let me tell you why. Why did I not get a 2.2? One, the Onefinity doesn't have a mount yet for an 80 millimeter spindle. Well then I could have got the 1.5 or the 800. I do this with Amazon credit because that's the reinvestment back in my business. Amazon, Amazon doesn't have a 1.5 kilowatt spindle in a 65 millimeter that I could find. So I'm stuck with an 800. Still, that's still an upgrade. Uh, well, maybe a side grade from the Makita router. Although it may be about the same power, I do have the spindle control where I can crank it way down in RPMs. And when I'm plowing through some stuff, it should keep the RPMs at a consistent level. Also, it's quieter. So that's a huge benefit in the shop. So let me open it up, show you what an 800 watt uh, spindle looks like, and we'll get it installed and see if it's worth it. How loud is it? Of course, that's what you want to know first. So we're going to do a test. Fisher's over here at the spindle we're going to hit the play button and we're going to listen to the spindle rotate as fast as it can at 24,000 rpm fisher hit it the spindle is about 11 foot away from my microphone it just started spinning up you are hearing a constant hum from the bfd that has a fan which is loud spindle has already reached 24,000 rpm hey fisher can you hear me yes is that spindle loud we can have a conversation in here without yelling. It's pretty great. All right, Fisher has the Makita router. This is a trim router that most hobby CNCs are using. So I have the dial set at six, that's 30,000 RPMs. So turn it on and let's hear it. That is the maximum, it's much louder. Hey Fisher, can you hear me? No. It's way louder, isn't it? It's hard to talk. Okay, you can turn that off. So that's the Makita router. So there's your sound comparison. The spindle speed is still on. Let me go turn it off so you can hear the ambient room. All right, the spindle is off. This is the ambient room. I do have a 3D printer going on over here. So you're hearing a little bit of that. Is it quieter? By far, yes, if you're not actually cutting material. But if you're cutting material, you still have the noise of the material being cut. I'll show that more in part two. So this is a Huan Yang electrical uh, spindle. From what I understand, if you're going Chinese, go Huan Yang. This is an 800 watt with the um, four bearings instead of two. So it should be better. So inside you see we have some aquarium hose, yellow or orange. Then we have the, I don't know, like pond pump to pump the water. This is a water cooled spindle, so we need a pond pump. It does also have a 65 millimeter mount for a CNC that I will not be using. We have the electrical uh, connections, what we need to do, pins and such. That's about all you get. So what, what you need to do to connect it. All right, in here, this is the VFD, variable frequency drive. So you will connect this, connect your spindle to this machine, and then this machine will connect to your CNC. So we have a big, thick instruction booklet that hopefully turns out to be pretty good. And then inside here. Okay, so another reason why I went with the 800 is because I only have so much power in the shop. I don't have 220, an extra 220 out here. So I went with the 110, which again limits what I can do. And as I have the controller, the CNC, and the, um, the spindle plugged in, I'm about maxing out the amp for the outlet. So that's why I'm here. You know it's a real branded one if it actually has a control knob. If it has a space for a control knob but it doesn't have a knob, you have an off brand. So this is the HY series, HY01D511B. And um, it is not that big and it's pretty light. And we'll probably connect some stuff under here. There's the connectors. We'll be connecting things into there. So we'll look at that a little bit later. Now we're down to the actual spindle itself. So we'll open it up. Take it out. 
So be careful when you open this up, it does have a little connector here. But this is the actual spindle. There's not much to it. It is pretty hefty. It is probably three times heavier than the Makita spindle I have. This does say it's the 65-800. 65 millimeters uh, in circumference and 195 tall. And I'm wondering if that's from the collet to the top or not. Let's test that out. So 195 is from the base of here to the top of here. That does not include the collet or any of these lines up top. So up top we have, so up top we have the power connection. This is kind of like an aircraft cable. And that is what this other part is right here. It'll plug into there. And then these two are the uh, inlet and outlet. As far as I understand, it doesn't matter which way it goes. It's just pumping water in and pumping out. So it doesn't really matter how you connect it. But that will connect the water line to flow through here and keep it cool. This is an ER11 collet. So if you're used to the DeWalt or the Makita, it is the exact same way. Um, you will need some wrenches because this did not come with it. So you'll just take off the tip like that. And then it has, it comes with a six millimeter because they love to work in millimeters. So here in America, we're in half inch or eighth inch typically. So I had to buy some collets. You just change out this little nut piece inside and it changes how big the hole is. So you can use quarter inch or eighth inch bits. So that is another purchase you'll have to make. So that is pretty much it for the spindle. We'll come back and uh, mount it into the CNC and work from there. Okay, so I went out and got all the things I think I need for this. So I got some clear tubing from Ace Hardware. Uh, the tubing that it came with, the orange stuff, that was six millimeter, and this is a quarter inch. Uh, so that should work, I think. I also got a bucket. I don't really like this bucket. This is just kind of what I found uh, for now. It was a dollar at Family Dollar. So we got a bucket to put the uh, coolant inside and put the hoses into. I also bought two rubber grommets at uh, O'Reilly's. They are for a Toyota PCV valve, but I think they're gonna fit this hose pretty well. I'll cut a hole in this, put these through the rubber grommets, and then that way this will be somewhat sealed. Um, I also bought some antifreeze and coolant, 50-50 shot, so it's green. I went with the clear tubing so I can actually see the antifreeze and making sure that it's running through that hose. You don't necessarily need to do that. I just wanted to be able to physically see that the uh, pump was running. And finally, that spindle comes with no wiring. So I bought some light duty. It's a 16 gauge, 25 foot extension cord from Ace. If you look, what's really weird at Ace, if you look at the ones without a plug on the end and it's just a cord, they're like three times more than just buying the extension cord and cutting off the end. I bought a 25 foot one because we need wire going into the deal and then we want from the VFD to the spindle and then we need wire from the VFD to the power outlet. So if I cut this in half, I get about 13 foot for both. Surely that should be long enough um, and we just won't use this end. So I guess the first thing I need to do is work on this wiring so I can get the VFD plugged in and uh, the spindle plugged in. So let's zoom in and see what I do with this wiring. I'm not an electrician, so um, this is dude in the shop figures it out.
All right, so we have our wires here. You can see there's a both end of just one of the wires. This is gonna be the one that goes to, one goes to the spindle and one goes to the VFD. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna attach these little connector pieces like this, these terminal ends. We're gonna connect that onto one end of the wires. So they just slide through and then you squeeze these tight and closed. The other end, we're gonna use this little piece that came with the VFD. So these wires are gonna go inside like this, connect to the pins, and then we just need to correct it to the correct pins. You'll notice there are four pins in here. This is an aircraft connector. There are four, four uh, holes for four pins, and my wire only has three. That's because I live in rural Arkansas and I cannot find a wire that has four. Um, if you're an electrical person, you're going to mock me in the comments and that's just fine because I won't have a ground and I'm gonna be using a ground wire as a live wire. I will know this. Nobody else is gonna be using this machine, so I'm not worried about it. And I'm just not gonna have a ground hooked up because I can't find one that has four wires in a cable. If you can do that, make sure you get four wires and you'll hook them all up. The VFD does come with this instruction sheet that shows how to connect things. So it literally only shows three wires connected in the VFD. Of course, this is from China, so they don't care about um, ground either, uh, even though they do show earth wire over here. So we need uh, to wire our pins one, two, and three, and those will go in their respective R, S, and T, T slots in the VFD. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this connector and we're gonna remove these two little screws holding this, um, piece that makes it to where the wires won't be pulled out. We're just gonna remove them all the way for now and set that aside. Don't lose these screws, they are very small. All right, that connector piece is gone. So now we're going to remove this piece. Now on mine, it does have a small set screw that we need to uh, remove. And I have a computer set of screws. It is a flat head. So we just need to loosen that. Do not take it all the way out. You will lose it. And it is not easy to get back in. So when you loosen that, you can go ahead and turn this end part and it will remove like that. And then we have a coupler. One end is threaded, one end is smooth. The threaded side always will go down. We put it back together and that's what the inside of this looks like. So now you can see we have four connector pieces like that. So our wires will sit inside and then we'll put some solder in them. I've never done this. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. It's probably gonna be a terrible solder job because I'm not very good, but if it works, it works, and that's what I'm gonna do. I am also going to use some uh, heat shrink. You can see it's, I only have this one, just happens to be in the shop, but I want to isolate each wire um, like this so they won't touch each other. So what I'll do is I'll cut some off, I'll wrap these around, twist these ends. I'll cut some off. We're gonna slide it up in there to where the wire is and then when I get it soldered, I'll push it down and then uh, I'll heat shrink it. So let me cut these. Cut this into thirds. I mean, about one right there. One, we'll just go about halfway. So we'll go like that. As I'm looking at the ends of this, we really only want enough copper wire to go in there, like so. Um, I think my copper wire is a little too long, so I'm just gonna take this and snip so I don't have as much exposed wire 
going into it. So I'll snip it about there. You can see it's pretty short. So now we'll shove on our heat shrink like that. And our wires are gonna be like so. I think I need to cut this back just a little bit so my heat shrink will fit up out of the way. So I just use a knife and I just scar around the outsides of this. I don't wanna cut all the way through and then I'll bend and it kind of splits it. I didn't quite go all the way through enough on all this. You can split it right there. I just want the outside part to be cut through. The back, like that. All right, now we got ourselves a little bit more playroom with the heat shrink and get that away from the actual solder tip for each one of these. So I got that heat shrink and I have one more. Here it is. There is the other one. All right, so there's our heat shrink. Here's our end. So we're going into one, two, and three and they are labeled. It will focus. Hopefully you can see it's labeled one, two, three, and four. We're just gonna use one, two, and three. If you have four, that'll be your ground. I don't have a ground. Here's my solder. I have my soldering gun right here. I have a Weller. Don't buy the cheap one, buy a uh, better one. It gets much hotter and you can control the heat right here. So this has been heating up. So I'm gonna pull it out of the way. I'm gonna pull out enough solder to where I can work with it. I'm going to grab um, any one of these. Doesn't really matter at this point. I'm gonna just have one and I'm gonna make uh, the green. I'm gonna make 0.1. So I'm going to, this is where I kinda wish I had a third hand. I'm gonna put the green inside the one I'm gonna lay it down. This may be hard for you to see because I don't have the ability to move it to where you can see so well. Right now I'm just trying to get it to where it'll stay in one place and stop rolling. Use this piece, make it to where it'll stop. There we go, got a connection point. point. It is nearly impossible for you to see what I am doing. Which is probably better because I'm a terrible solder. Check out that solder joint. That's what it looks like for that one. So, oh, my heat shrink got shrank, which is unfortunate. <laughs> I didn't keep that away. So we're gonna cut that in and push the heat shrink down a little bit more. Um, oh well. All right, here's my heat shrink. I still have enough to push it down over that joint. And then the heat will wrap that up and we won't see it. So there's my connection one. Now I'm gonna do white to connection two. Or actually I'm gonna do black because that's just kind of where the wires are pointing. So we'll get some heat shrink again. I'm going to cut this in half because it's too, the heat shrink is really long. And it's just going to heat up. 
There's two. I'll flip it around this way. Get the wire inside like that. I'm trying to get it to where it'll film, but it is not easy to hold, heat, put the wire on. So it's just kind of, it's going to be what it is. All right, here's connection two. Just make sure it doesn't pull out. We're good. The heat shrink didn't get shrank, which is a positive. So then we'll put heat shrink on this one. And that is going to connect, oh, that's connection three. Second connection, but I went to pin three. And then this one is gonna come over and go to pin two on this side. Shove that in like that. And then heat it up again and put some solder in it. All right, my three points are soldered. You can see that. They're on, they're connected. I just need to push this heat shrink down on the last two points here. Like that. That's on. Heat these up. And then we will connect this connector piece. Probably should have shoved that connector piece up in here first, but we'll go the other way around. Tip for you, shove this part up on here first. Shrink wrapped onto it. We're good. So now we're gonna go on the other end. Hope these wires will fit all through this plastic grommet. Like this. We're gonna put it through this way. Shove it through that and then hope, yeah, pull it. We're just pulling this through and pulling this through. Pull the rubber through first and the next one will, the other piece will follow. Um, do this first if you're doing this at home. We got it down to the end now, you can see. And we'll just shove this all the way down over all the wires. Like that. And then we'll take this piece and it'll come down. Uh, but don't forget about this piece. This piece needs to go on first. So we're gonna take that metal piece off. Uh, so we'll go down here. This will come back onto here. And then we'll screw that together. Like so. So now we have it all right. Remember the threads are down this way. So we'll get that set screw now and tighten that one. So the set screw's tight, all of this is tight. Now we'll come back with the strain relief, put that on, and then we'll put in the bolts we took out and tighten those down. Here's our strain relief, there's our cable. One end is done. Now, we've gotta work on the other end down here. Okay, so here's our VFD. If you have the real one, it's gonna have the knob here. It has two bolts here, and then we have some rubber grommets down here. So you're gonna go ahead and loosen these two bolts if you have them. If you don't, this bottom part should snap off and it just kind of lifts up and back and it comes out. And we can see all of our connections here. 
So this is our power control and everything up here from the controller, but down on the bottom, down in here, this is where we're gonna connect the spindle to and the power out to the, uh, to the wall. So what we're gonna do here is we can see we have the motor, U, V, and W. That's one, two, and three. So we're gonna go ahead and check out this grommet on the bottom. We're gonna open that up. We just pull it out, you can see, and it does tell us U, V, and W and everything down here. So we pull that out and this has nothing to it. There's no hole in it, but we don't wanna pull it out and just leave it exposed. So I'm gonna take this grommet, I'm gonna take a knife, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a slit all the way across with my knife. And now there's a nice slit. There's a slit down the center. So I can slip the cables through like this and I'll still have some sort of rubber protection. So what we're needing to do is we're needing to connect these wires up into here. We could do it without a terminal uh, if we wanted. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I am going to get some of these circle terminals. There's a yellow one. So I have a big box of these. these I got these at uh, O'Reilly's the car parts store. Um, so if you do buy those, make sure that they're able to fit between the slots and you can see the red will fit between the slots. And I'm going to take the sticker off here where it says motor because we won't need that anymore. I'll just reuse it and stick it back inside. So I remember motor is over here. Although it does say UVW and ground. So if you did use four pin, the four uh, um, wires, unlike my three, your fourth wire ground will be to the one with like the line down with three dashes. So that'll be ground. I don't have that. And I, yes, again, I'm gonna say I'm gonna use ground as a live wire. Make fun of me all you want. This is what I have. This is what's gonna work. So. Um, yeah, so we have that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this to the side now. We have our um, our soldering iron still heating up because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the ends here, flatten them out like that. And we're gonna slide in our terminals. We want to push them all the way down until it hits the, the base of the rubber. So I am going to just push it in. Let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better. So I'm sliding it down. Uh, we're pulling the wire flat like that, twisting it up, making it real tight and make sure we left enough to where it'll stick out the end. And you can see I left almost a little too much, so I'm gonna snip off just a tiny bit. I wanna be able to see it come out, but just barely. So you can see that's where I'm at. I like to be about there. So I'm gonna take my crimper and I'm going to squeeze this. really hard and crimp the wire and I didn't crimp it enough so I'm gonna get something to crimp it even more <clears throat> so we squeeze it from the side like that it gets generally tight but I'm gonna add some solder to the end of that because I don't want this to come apart at all. So I'm gonna heat this joint up. Hold the heat to the back. And you can see my joint. Again, I'm not the best solderer. You can see my joint there. Now has solder in the end. And I know that joint is not coming out because it is soldered to it. So I'm just gonna repeat that process on all the other wires.
There we go. All right, there we are. There's our three. They're on there. They're soldered. Good enough for me. So let's attach it to the VFD. Now we're ready to connect it to the wires on the inside here. So we do need to remember we're going to go through this rubber grommet first. So we're going to take our connectors and shove them all the way through the rubber grommet. But we could just shove it down. We're not actually going to attach that. Also, we're going to use U, V, and W. So we're going to go ahead and remove those screws all together. U, V, and W. V, and here is W. So those are out completely. Now we are going to look at the instruction sheet and it does say um, over here, connect, connect aviation plug. One, two, and three to inverters U, V, W. So I'm assuming one goes to U, two goes to V, and three goes to W. May not even matter because it's all just three phase power, but um, we're just gonna connect it that way. So we need to remember how we connected it. And if I remember right, we did green is number one. So I'm gonna put all the wires up in there, get a connector onto my magnetic um, so there's connector one I believe white was at number two so that'll be at the next one V and then Black was the last one I used, so that'll be at connection W. So here is white. Then the last connector is the black one. So it's just, just remember which connector you used, because that'll make a difference. But there you go. There is the spindle power it is connected up. So hopefully I did it right, and we'll guess we'll find out later in the video. So next we got to do the main power, and that's going to be RST. So let's check out on the instructions. Input power connect to the RST. 220, 110, and this is in 110, connect R and T. So I'm guessing the two lies are R and T and the ground is um, S. I'm gonna do a little bit more internet research to just make sure because it doesn't show anything in here. And I will come back and we'll connect that up. After doing a little bit more research, the R and the T are gonna be the black and the white, and then the ground is gonna to go to nine, the ground over on the end. So I've already got my cable. One end is the regular power. One end is the uh, end I cut off earlier. But if you can see, if I shove the wires up in there, I can't reach the green over to the end. So I'm going to cut it back maybe to about here so I can reach that. So again, this is the 110. Let's just double check that I can reach all of the connections I need to reach easily so now I can reach it I have some cable I might actually have a little bit too much cable so I think I will cut these down there we go so let me move these the VFD out of the way because we don't need that we're gonna need the soldering gun again and let me find some more of the red circles now you could use, I'll zoom in. You could use the non-circles. You see I have the, like the fork, but those could slip out. These definitely couldn't if something gets undone. And because this is like 
live wire 110. I don't want it to slip out and touch anything. So we're gonna do that. Although you could say, hey, you're not using a ground on the spindle and I would say, yeah, you're right. So there are my three. So we're gonna tighten these up. We're gonna take a look as they're shoved in here, see if the wire is too long. That one's a little too long. Blacks, I can already tell, are gonna be too long. White can be trimmed just a smidge. Retighten them. Shove them on and check them out again. That one looks good. That one looks good. And that one looks good. All right, just crimp these for what it's worth. Tightened it, and then let's go ahead and solder on the connection. Let's get the wire up here so it'll stay up there. There's three. All right, that should be the end of the soldering we need to do. So we'll let it cool off and then we'll bring the VFD back in here. I'm trying to do it to where you can see what I'm doing. Remember, we need to go back through this rubber grommet with our second pair of cables. They are still very hot from the soldering. Okay, so here's how we're gonna hook it up. We have R, T, and we have our ground on the other end. So I pulled out the nuts to that. And we have our wires coming in. So we are gonna hook up the black to the R. Then the white to the T. And then the green will go over to the uh, ground. So I'm going to hook up ground first. So it's on the other end. Ground. Now I'm going to hook up the black that's on this end. And then I'm going to hook up the white to the T. I'm going to take this rubber grommet slide it up like this shove it all back in like that <clears throat> and that is our cabling for the VFD so at this point we're gonna put the front back on like this it just slides down and then down like that and then we're gonna get where the screwdriver go that i was just using we just screw this down like that screw this down and our vfd is set Okay, we're back over at the CNC. We brought the VFD with us. What we're gonna do is, for now, we're going to get the cord that goes to the spindle. We'll go ahead and get that, and we'll wire that in. And it does have uh, certain ways that it can plug in, but we'll wire that one on. Like that. Okay, we hooked up the wire to the spindle. Now, if you're gonna do this, go ahead and take off the uh, 
call it. And the nut, because if that spins up, we don't want the call it and the nut to uh, shoot off. So now we'll go ahead and plug it in. And we don't have a switch on that wire, we just plugged it in. We have a fan on top that's blowing. And we have a bunch of things that are blinking. Power is lit up. Four has nothing, it's blinking. Hertz has nothing, although it's solid. Rev, A, and Rot, I don't know what any of those are, but those are not lit up. So we have a dial on the front that I can turn the spindle speed up and down. And let's see if we click run if the spindle will spin up. You can see I turn the dial, you can hear it. I don't have any water hooked up, we're just doing this real quick to see if it actually works. We're at 130 RPM. We're just gonna crank it all the way up. We're at 295, 300. It's spinning up. I'll click stop. And now it's slowing down. So we can confirm it is turning on, it is spinning. Spindle is good. So we're good on that part. So I'm gonna unplug the power. It's still spinning down. Now we're gonna hook up our water. So we make sure we do any tests that we're not ruining the spindle, but we know that everything's connected right and we're good. So let's hook up the water. So first thing we wanna do when we hook up the water is make sure we disconnect all the power. Cause we are doing, with, doing some things with liquid and we don't wanna mix liquid and power. So that's good. I also have a power plug over on the corner that I'm going to disconnect everything from. All right, it's time to connect the water. It came with this orange tubing. I'm not gonna use it because I wanna see it actually flow through that tube. I think it's cooler. But the safety benefit is I know that the water is flowing as opposed to this orange tube I can't see inside it. So we're gonna toss that. I have this tubing right here. I bought 20 foot. I'm gonna cut it directly in half. I don't know where I'm gonna set this water in its permanent place in the shop. So I'm gonna do 10 foot for each in and outlet. So I'm just gonna uh, gather the two ends, like so, butt them together like this. And then I'm just gonna go like this. And where it meets in the loop, that is roughly half. We don't have to be exact on this. Um, I just know that's where I want it. So I'm gonna take the scissor and cut it as straight as I possibly can. And that's one end. So what I'm gonna do on here, we have uh, two connections for the wire. And let me zoom in on that. Two connections for the wire, you're just gonna simply lift these nuts up there. This one up like that. We're gonna place the nut actually onto the um, hose that we've got. My hose is maybe a little too big. I have to fold it up to fit it in this hole. It's real, real close, but this is what my local hey, We don't need to go too far. So we got it through. Now we're gonna stick it over this connector piece right there. And then we're gonna stick this down. And it is basically like a pressure fitting on here where it'll connect it. And then we'll get a wrench to tighten that one down. And then we'll go to the other one we have. We'll do the exact same thing Stick it through. My hose is a little big. The outside of the diameter of this is a little big because everything is working in millimeters for this Chinese one. 
and everything that I have access to is Imperial. So, like so, stick it over the connector, pull it down, I don't have it screwed. I don't have the mount screwed down yet. I'm making sure that that hose is still pushed all the way down to the bottom of the connector as I work this down onto the threads. Alright, there's our two. This one looks like it's still kind of far away compared to the other one, so I'm going to tighten down a little bit more. There we go. There's our two hoses. We're good there. So now we have a in and an out. Neither one matters. It doesn't matter which one is in and which one is out. So we're going to use the water pump that they provided. It comes with a little baggie. And in this little baggie, we have some suction feet. These suction feet will go on like so. You just push it in and on. This will keep the pump at the bottom of the reservoir. So there's our suction feet. There's, it comes with this other end that goes in the top of it to pump the water. However, I want that to be in here and coming out. So when I do that, I actually need to cut a hole in the top first so that I'll fit in. If I put this on first, this won't fit in through it. So we need to cut a hole through our top. As I'm looking at it, my Tupperware might be a little short, but that that's okay. I bought some rubber grommets from O'Reilly's. So we're gonna take those out and I am going to hope that this fits through there. It fits through there pretty good. There is a little bit of a hole around it, but uh, it fits through. I'm going to take the outer diameter, drill two holes, and set this thing in, see kind of where, it, where the holes will go. So I'll put it at one end of it, kind of right here. You can kind of see where the hole will go, and then I'll cut the hole in with a drill bit, stick the grommet in and then uh, connect the pipe. Okay, so my hole is roughly a three quarter and I think roughly about here is where I'm gonna put a hole. I'm just gonna poke it down with my spade bit. I'm gonna put another hole over here on the other side. So that way our water is going in one side, out the other, and it kind of has some fluid to flow through and cool down. I'm gonna put it the spade bit in my drill. I'm just gonna drill this hole through. Like that. I'm gonna do it on this side as well. There's my two holes. Then I'm gonna get the grommet that I bought at O'Reilly's and stick it in this hole. Fits perfectly. So there's my rubber grommet going through here. And then the hose will go through that. I get this other one, my two grommets. Here's my other one over here. That looks pretty nice, two grommets. You can always pull them out if this ends up being a little too short. This is just what I found at the family dollar. I didn't want it super big, but okay. I'm also gonna have to cut a hole for the wire or maybe I can just leave it up and hanging out like this because this isn't a super sealed case. It's just what I had access to this morning when I went out and bought it. So let's go ahead and screw on the, screw on this top first. as far down as we can go. 
it's definitely gonna stick through our rubber grommet, which will be okay, actually. Um, so that's what it looks like there. And then we're going to take this and shove it down in through. I'm gonna take the lid off, slide it down to make sure that I have this piping all the way down. Then I'm gonna take a zip tie and zip tie it around the base. And there we have it, that is my top. Let's hope that that fits through the grommet, which I think it actually seals a little bit better because it's so big. And that is my little pump. Hopefully that's enough. We'll see. The other end of this will just sit through here and pump the water down through. And that is our pump. So I'm running a 50-50 mix of antifreeze, coolant, and water. Uh, this will allow me to see the green flowing through. It also has anti-rust and such inside of it. Um, that's what I'm gonna try and run. So. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this. Well, here we go. We'll just fill this tub up with antifreeze and coolant. I wanna submerge the whole pump, so I need to get a little bit more water um, and then fill it up and then we can put this on top. I'm most definitely gonna have to get a bigger jug. <laughs> that is uh, to the brim, not great. So, so let's plug the pump in and check all our connections. Make sure that they are working. We don't have any fluid running anywhere. And that part is all good. So there's no on and off switch for the pump. So we just plug it in and see if it works. Oops. This switch wants to fall out of my plug. <laughs> See, we got an in, we got a return, getting all the water out. And now you can see the fluid is flying through. This is really quiet. You're not hearing that pump at all. So we have a perfect connection. We have no leaks up here in any way. Our spindle is connected, the water's flowing through it, we're all good. Definitely get a sealable, uh, bigger container. This is too small, but this is what I found at Dollar Store this morning just to try it out. So that'll change out, but here we go. We're, we're doing good here. Here's our VFD. I'll set it right here so we can see it. I'll plug it into the spindle. So we can have the spindle running and hear everything going at the same time. Okay, so we got the spindle right here. We're gonna grab the power portion. We're gonna plug it in. Our VFD will turn on as soon as we plug it in. Power hurts run. So what we'll do now is we'll turn it all the way down to slow. We'll click run. So there is power, it's ready to go or at zero. I'm gonna slowly turn it up. You can see that it's on, it is spinning, I can feel it. Turn it up to 100%. These do take a while to speed up. It's still cranking up. It's at 400. But right now we're running, we got water flowing, we have the spindle spinning. So we're at the point where we can call this a success. And now we just have to do some configuring and that will be in part two of this video. So the spindle isn't on right now, but the VFD is. It does have a small computer fan at the very top. And if I hold it up to my mic, that's what it sounds like. It is kind of annoying and weirdly pitched. It's not very loud. I'm talking in a very calm voice. 
Let's turn the spindle on so you can hear what the spindle sounds like. If I click on run, the spindle is spinning up. I have it set to the highest point right now. It's only 400 RPM because I don't know how to set it to go to 2400 or 24,000 RPM. But, or maybe 400 equals 24,000 RPM. At this point, I'm not sure. Video two, I'll walk you through how to set this thing and make it sure it's correct. The spindle is spinning right now. It can't really hear it. The fan is almost as loud as the spindle. This is super quiet. I am blown away by this whole setup, how quiet it is. There is a ton of stuff to do. It is not as simple as sliding a router in and clicking a button and turning it on. So if you don't want to mess with any of this stuff, don't buy a spindle at this point. Um, there's a lot of wiring, soldering, connecting. It is not for the faint of heart, not for the beginner. So it is super quiet. I do love that part. I can talk to you. I can talk in a normal tone of voice. I can have a conversation. If anything, right now, when I'm running this machine, the vacuum is gonna be four times louder than the actual machine. So it doesn't push air through like a router. A router actually needs airflow to push through to cool it. And that causes all the dust and uh, chips that you make and blows it all around, all around the shop. This has no airflow underneath. I can't feel it because it has water cooled. So the chip should just fall straight down and not get blown away. Also, when you're running a vacuum, it should get sucked up a lot easier because it's not being forced away and back up into it. So it should be a lot more cleaner being that you can get a lot of the chips out. So that is running the spindle right now. This is part one. Part two, we'll go into configuring it. For this machine, I just happen to have the Onefinity. Configuring it with the controller, making it work, and hopefully we'll cut some stuff. So thanks for watching. As always, happy cutting.